everybody. This is Grandmaster Vara Corbin, and I'm here with St. Louis Chess Club, and we're going to play the people for the next uh, hour and a half. So uh, if you want to play me, just uh, you can send me a challenge. I will uh, see here. Let's see. I will start uh, with one game. I think I have one ch challenger already. So let's see. Uh, two challengers I have. Uh, I would maybe prefer a little bit longer games if we can start with, uh, or maybe three plus two would be the ideal. Uh, so, so we can maybe do uh, three plus two time control. So, uh, so I will uh, start with uh, this game. So I'm playing a twenty one hundred and. So this is probably going to be a tough match here. So let's see. I have six. So we have the Nimzo Indian defense. And I would, I would prefer to play uh, with increment going forward uh, just to avoid, uh, you know, flagging and a play on, uh, on time, you know. So castle. So, uh, like in a Nimzo Indian, the main idea is to control the e4 score, and that's what I'm doing, trying to do with the knight on e4. And now I will put the knight on d7 and uh, try to organize an attack on the light squares. So we'll see if I can manage to do that. My opponent is playing some aggressive moves, so let's see what is he planning to do now with this h4. So. Let's see. So h5 he plays. Now I will just put the pawn on h6 to, to see what the opponent is trying to do. I have some queen g5 ideas coming in. Putting pressure on h5 and also attacking the g2 pawn. So, so he retreated uh, to defend. Um, so let's see here. I feel like I might have something here. Uh, he's playing a bit, uh, my opponent playing a bit dubious, I think. So, all right, I'll just try to build up. Now I want to put a knight on g4, putting pressure on f2. So, and he can still play knight g6 because knight g6 I'm going to take on uh, g2. So I'll, I'll continue with the plan. Getting my knight to g4. Now I'm putting pressure on f2. So let's see what's going to happen now. So if rook on e4, bishop takes e4. Attacking the queen. Now h5 pawn is hanging. Uh, it feels like uh, white position is. Uh, uh, Collapsing soon. So let's see here. Okay, I will try to do this perhaps. Now I just want to take on h5 with a knight. Um, f3, okay, I retreat maybe here. Just keeping the eye on keeping the eye on a4. Okay, my opponent is not sure what is he trying to do. So let's see here. Let's take here, threatening knight g3 now, guys, trying to fork. So we take maybe one time here, open up the position of the king. And so maybe put the rook on d8, I'm thinking. Okay, I'm up a pawn, a little bit behind on the clock. So to play a little faster now. So he castle, we put the knight on g3, now hitting the rook and hitting the knight. Knight is trapped in the corner, guys. That's the reason why you don't put the knight on the rim, right? Knight on the rim is dim. And now the knight got trapped and looks like the game is going to be over shortly. Queen takes h4, followed up with queen takes h1 mate. So, and... Uh... Oh, okay. All right, excellent. 
well, well preferred time control probably would be like something like 3 plus 2. We can play 3 plus 2. That's probably the preferred time control. And uh, I won my first game, guys. So, yeah, this was a Nimzo Indian defense. And, uh, um, yeah, I think uh, things went uh, a little wrong. So let's take a look now. Uh, okay, so I have a lot of challenges. Again, I prefer the with increments so I can talk to you guys and maybe explain to you what I'm trying to do, okay? So let's see here. So we have, I'm gonna accept a challenge from Nazgul. Let's see, Nazgul 1700. All right, good luck. So I'm black again here, so I will play knight f6. Now I will play some tricky line with, okay, let's play the one more Nimzo. So now I play b6, putting the bishop on, putting the bishop on b7. So now I pin first, because if I play bishop b7, then there might be some a3 idea. So I don't want to allow that. So I go here. Bishop b7 again. I will play this a little bit more aggressive move. It's probably not the best line, but I could uh, try this. So let's see. Knight e4, putting pressure. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I take. Castle. I'm already happy with my position. I, uh, my opponent, I think, uh, didn't play the best way. And uh, okay, he wants to get this c5 in. He really wants to do that. And it's not really a, a big deal, but okay, at least he's playing. Uh, he's playing thematic here with this c5. So I expect him to play c5 here because. If he doesn't play c5, then I just put a knight on d7. It's going to be difficult. So he didn't play that. So let's see now. What can I do? So I'm going to put this bishop here. Bishop c6. To put some pressure on a4. a4 is a really, really weak pawn. And now look how I do this, guys. We take this way. Take and we play d5. This way we lock the bishop, okay? We shut down the bishop. And now he's trying to kill. So now we get the knight active here on a6. Now we got the b4 square for the knight. Now we take back with the queen. Threatening checkmate on g2. So, and he blunders the mate. So that's a good game right there. My opponent didn't pay attention to the threat. And that's why when you have the bishop on c6, you have a battery. And uh, he just, uh, my opponent didn't see it. So that was a quick win. Another win with uh, uh, Nimzo. Let's see. Hey, hey guys. Uh, see a lot of uh, people in the chat here. 3 plus 2 probably would be the best time control. Uh, well, you just send a challenge to uh, 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 St. Louis uh, Chess Club account and that's, that's what you got to do. Just send a challenge. What do you think of the proposed winner of the FDA chess? I'm not sure I'm familiar with. Uh, yeah, uh, this is a master class. Yes, it's a blitz uh, session and a master class where I will explain to you guys how to uh, play blitz uh, properly. And uh, I've been playing blitz since I was six years old. And I played with a lot of great, great players, Levon Aronian. I grew up with him, Gabriel Sargis, and some very top players. So I played a lot of, lot of Blitz in my career. I always enjoyed the Blitz. In uh, 2017 World Blitz Championship, I played against Magnus Carlsen. Uh, in World Blitz Championship, I played many, many top teams. So Blitz is always fun and enjoyable. And uh, so I will be a Grandmaster in Residence at the Chess Club next two weeks or so before I head out for my tournament in Isle of Man, Fide Grand Swiss tournament. 
and uh, so I will be doing some videos and these videos will be recorded and uploaded I know you guys are waiting for those videos and uh, so I read your comments and appreciate uh, the support okay so stay tuned on the channel on the St. Louis Chess Club channel and tonight I'll be recording some videos as well a Thursday night and uh, also Sunday so there should be some fresh videos coming up all right so let's move forward now next challenge here we have all right 2100 let's see here Scarlet. okay all right so I play let's see if my opponent wants to go into the French so nope he didn't want to play the French so I go knight f6 guys Okay, I go b6. Again, in the names of Indian, you just put the bishop on b7, you control the e4 square. Okay, so it's very important you control the e4 square there. Castle. I will play some d6. Yeah. Yeah, the point of h3 is, guys, so when I play knight h5, my opponent can go bishop h2. So that's the idea of the move. All right, so now I need to come up with a plan. So I play a6 just to cover the b5 square. And I will just try to trade some pieces. And we had another strong chess tournament at the chess club that finished yesterday, fall classic tournament. I don't know if you guys had a chance to follow. There are always tournaments at the club and this was a, a strong 10 player round robin tournament. And this was my first tournament after the US championship in the last five months. So, and uh, I finished strong winning the last two games and tie for second place in that tournament. So the finish was good there. So you can check out some of the games, guys. If you go to US Chess Champs and click on a FIDE fall open, you'll be able to see the, see the games. Uh, the tournament was won by Ray Robson. He had a great run. So knight f6, now I wanna put the knight on e4. Uh, just the standard stuff here, nothing, nothing special so far, just as you can see, in all the games, I'm trying to fight for the e4 square here. So now knight goes to e4. And let's see. Knight on e4. Yeah, it's uh, very important, the knight, to go on e4. And uh, yeah, thank you for the compliment about my videos. I appreciate that, uh, Marcus. Uh, Okay, so the question is if I should start to go really aggressive here. So let's try it. It's a blitz game. So we're going to go really aggressive now. G5, H5, threatening to play G4. Yeah, when you play these positions, guys, putting the knight on E4 is the key. Okay? Uh, I probably wouldn't have played like this if this was a longer game because white has a very good move here. So I'm not sure if my opponent is listening. So, uh, uh, yeah, d5 would have been very strong. If he had played d5, I think I could have been in a serious trouble there. So I will play take. Yeah, this is a bit uh, ultra, ultra aggressive here. I'm not sure if this is the right way to play in this position. But it's a blitz game. My opponent has one minute on a clock, so I'm simply going to uh, just play natural moves open up to h file and hopefully try to give a checkmate. So I have some king g7, rook h8 ideas, double up the rooks, triple up on the h file and game is over, okay? Yeah, 58 seconds. A really tough situation for my opponent to be. I have a lot of space. I have a lot of space there and now d5 he played is that's a correct move actually i will play queen f6 
and uh, again my long-term plan here guys is to play double up my rooks or rook and queen on h file and give a mate so it's a very very difficult position for um, my opponent here so all right Thank you, Boris. I, I speak Russian and I can read your comment. Appreciate that. And just challenge the St. Louis uh, account on the, on the uh, leeches. I already have 27 challenges, so it looks like, uh, you know, we're doing good. We got a lot of people watching us and uh, people are excited uh, to play me, which is great. So, okay, guys, he, my opponent has 20 seconds. He's got a strong idea, bishop c4. This was a good move he played, c5. This was a really good move. So, for example, if you're not paying attention, you take on c5 here. With d takes c5, it'll be a blunder. He plays bishop c4, and you're losing your queen. So you, you got to always pay attention to what's going on on the board. You can't just uh, play a move without paying attention. So I'm going to try to stop that idea. But he is threatening c6. I got to tell you, it's not so easy. I think I might have misplayed it a little bit here. But luckily, he doesn't have so much time. So maybe I can still uh, create some ideas. So I still have a lot of activities and a lot of ideas. So c6, I go bishop c8 and e4. Not sure what he's trying to do. So I, I could have taken a rook actually, but okay, this is good too. G3, and that's that's not good. That's that's not a good bishop on h2, guys. That's that's that bishop is not gonna be able to come up. So now the question is, what's the best way to win this, guys? And we were talking about putting the you know doubling up, so I'll just go king g7 with with a very simple idea. I just want to play. Rook h8. So my opponent gives gives us gives him giving a pawn. I'm not sure what is it doing, but uh, I could take maybe. I could take perhaps, or I could just try to go for a mate immediately. Let's try to mate immediately. And I believe this should be a mate. Okay, here. You can get one more check on c3, but after bishop f6, the queen is hanging and mate on h2. So that's game over, guys. And uh, yeah, good game. Uh, so let's see if we have some more questions. Uh, uh, yes, I, I got invited. I got invited actually yesterday to compete in a uh, chess banter championship uh, uh, and I'm excited about it I'm not sure if they have the date already but I looked at it and it's gonna be 128 player knockout tournament and it looks like it's gonna be like something similar what we're doing we're gonna play people and we're gonna do commentary and talk about the game and uh, so and I saw the list and Magnus Carlsen is gonna be playing that tournament it's a chess 24 banter blitz cup and with some really good prizes there. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to play that when they announce the dates. And let's see. Yeah, d5 would have blocked the bishop. Uh, yeah, white tried to create counterplay, but it was not enough. Uh, uh, greetings, uh, St. Louis. And I want to say hello to my Armenian friends, uh, Karen Makartumian, Barrior, and we have some good Russian friends also commenting. Boris Trosman. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's the question? Thank you, AP, for the compliment. And all right, let's play another game now. Let's see. We have, guys, we have 39 people challenging. I mean, this is 39. This is a record. I believe uh, uh, a friend of mine who works on a show, Danny Machuka, and he mentioned that this might be a record we have. 38. So if we play everybody, I think that's going <laughs> to that's gonna conclude. I don't think we can play. Okay, so let's see here. Um, is the, the challenge on the top is, means that's the first challenge, Danny? Uh, 
Okay. So the first one we've been waiting longer. Okay, I'm gonna accept the challenge by Hagai. Hagai. Uh, am I always black or this is just the settings? Okay, no, I, I, I mean, I don't mind playing black. I'm just, just, just wondering because all my games I'm black. Okay, I guess I can just play black today, guys. It's, it's, it's okay. Okay, exchange violation. I had exchange violation in my penultimate round. We got this knight c3 bishop b4 violation against Grandmaster Bortnik in round 8 of the Fide Fall Classic. So you guys can check out that game. It was this position. And uh, I, I managed to win that game. It was my probably my best game of the tournament. It was a pretty clean game here. So, okay, my opponent is not sure what he's doing. So let's question the bishop here. Let's see if he wants to give us the bishop. So in general, guys, you don't want to spend two moves and give up the bishop here. So this is already a slight inaccuracy because now I'm enjoying the pair of the bishops and I'm not going to give the pair back. I'm going to try to keep the bishops, okay? Because having the pair of the bishop is an advantage. So that's why I would like to keep it. So 95. Okay, what's going on here? Can we take on d4? I'm not sure. Let's take it then. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like we're up a pawn. I don't think, yeah, I don't think my opponent played very accurately this. Uh, all right, so what's going on here? So we go bishop to b6. So the question is, where is the compensation? Is there a compensation? Uh, maybe there is. I don't know. So let's find out. So it's attacking my knight. Uh, all right. Let's just try to trade some pieces now. So we're just trying to get rid of the e5 knight. Take. When you're playing blitz, you don't need to like do too many complicated things. You just try to put the pieces on natural squares. Try not to calculate too many long lines just you know play simple good moves that's that's the key simple good moves so here i'm trying to fight for the dark squares with d4 so now i see five okay i think i'm just up a pawn here guys so i don't think uh, i see any any compensation here and generally bishop is better than knight in this kind of positions okay because now I can put it on a long diagonal. And now I want to play some maybe queen g5 ideas as well. So let's see here. We have queen g5. Let's see what he'll do. We question the knight. We question the knight and then... Next thing would be to... Uh, Alright, what's happening here? I think my opponent blunder a tactic. Do you see the tactic, guys? All right, let's do it. Bishop takes f3. Taking advantage of the pin piece. That's the reason I played queen g5. Attacking the knight and hoping that he might play the queen on d2 to protect the knight that way. And then that will allow bishop to And this is now really bad now because his light squares are just terribly weak. And once I put my queen and a bishop, queen first and then bishop behind it on that diagonal, it's going to be uh, some very serious consequences here. So bishop there. Bishop comes back to, now, uh, okay, let's just put it on, let's just put it on 8. Just put it on 8. My goal is to go queen e5, queen e4, and that should be good. Okay, I have a, a problem on a back rank, so I will make this useful move to get a luft. Okay, remember your escape square. And now... I'm up two pawns here, guys, so this is just looking really good. Looking really, really good, and now I'm going to go queen e5, queen e5, queen e4, and... Okay, so what's happening here? Queen... All right, guys, should we try to... He's attacking the a6 pawn. Should we try to do something? Oh, okay, let's just, let's just defend the pawn. If take... We take back with the queen. 
I actually want my queen to be back on c5 so I can play queen c6. So this is a really, really comfortable position. Uh, rook e3 is in the works. Yeah, always keep your king protected. You know, try not to get into positions where you have to worry about the safety of your king because in a blitz game it's very hard to defend the king. So, you know, you just you don't want to spend time defending, so you want to have ideas. So, okay, rook e3 is coming. Rook takes a3. I can win another pawn if I want. I have queen c6 ideas as well. Uh, so, I don't know what's, what's happening here, but uh, it looks very strong. And he blundered the queen. So, well, position was already hopeless, and but on top of that, my opponent blundered the queen. So let me see if I can bring this computer a little closer here, so I can read read your comments here. My opponent resigned, guys. So, greetings. Uh, from Russia, hello. C4 after e takes d5. Yes, you can play. The question is about playing the exchange French and then c4. So you could do that. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Nice pawn structure. Yeah, I like the knight g7 setup against the exchange violation. I prefer that more videos well we're going to be making more videos next two weeks guys uh, the videos are made when i'm working for the club as a grandmaster in resident and that's when the these videos are recorded and uploaded okay okay let's see here uh h6 yeah well you have to get your luft okay all right guys so Trying to read if there's any interesting questions here, but yeah, I'm I'm, I'm uh, you know I'm glad to see everybody watching and tuning in for this stream from Serbia, from Czech Republic, from Denmark, Brazil, South Africa, France, Sweden. Wow. Yeah, these are some nice countries that I haven't been to, so it's on my list to visit one day, guys. So, some of the countries I haven't been to. Um, would like to visit. So, guys, we are up to 53 people challenging right now. My goodness. 53 people. All right, David. We're going to challenge, accept the David's challenge. He's been waiting. And now I've got a game with white, guys. So, I'm going to show you some D4 stuff now. I'm going to show you how we attack with white now, okay? We block, we go a little bit defensive, and then we just try to take advantage of it. So, now let's see what David is going to play here. So David is playing a King's Indian defense. So my last round game was very similar to, it wasn't exactly a King's Indian, but it was like similar structure here. So we play h3 because when we put the bishop on a3, we don't want to be bothered with knight g4. And h3 also stops the bishop hg4 idea. In general, it's a useful move for you to play this, okay? Now, c5, now he's going into some kind of Benoni type of positions. So I go here. So let's see now. Take, take. And. Okay, this is a critical moment here. My opponent can play the very sharp line here. Or he can play positionally. So question is, what would be the best thing to do? So he decided to play positionally. The other line would have been nice if he had played b5, the nice sharp line, okay? But he didn't do that, so we play castle. And uh, now it's a Benoni defense, and um, I like these positions quite a lot for white. I've, uh, I've had very good score in this type of structures, you know, Benoni structures. 
and feel feel pretty comfortable playing them so not easy for black to move because space there is some space advantage problems so c4 is an interesting attempt uh try to get the c5 square for the knight uh i'm gonna go bishop f4 again it's it's very unclear whether or not this is actually gonna work you know so let's see for him bishop f4 and looks like my opponent is not quite comfortable in a position because he's spending a lot of time here and yeah it's it's already not looking that great Okay, let's see here. Okay, queen b6. I'm not sure what my opponent is trying to do, so let's prepare the e5 break here, guys. We're going to prepare the break, and uh, there are a few ways I can play here. I can go bishop h2, but um, another idea I like here is I like to get rid of my opponent's dark square bishop here. So, I mean, again, bishop h2 was completely fine, but... I want to put a bishop on d4, so that's why I did this. So, once I trade the dark square bishop, then I can organize a strong attack because the king is going to be vulnerable because of the dark square bishop. So, this is pretty standard the next few moves. Maybe we get rid of the bishop, takes back, and now this is interesting. So, there's a lot of opportunities here for me. So, I will play queen d2 now. I want to try to get this guy here, guys. Now knight g5 is a huge threat. So essentially, my opponent has only one move here to stop the knight g5 threat. And if he doesn't play that move, he is in very serious trouble. So, and he finds the right move, which I was expecting. So knight goes on d4 now, guys. We're challenging the uh, b5 pawn. And... Uh, Getting ready to play f4, and uh, I think our, my opponent just didn't see it, that I was attacking the pawn twice. So now I'm attacking it twice, and takes, I take back with the knight, the queen, and I just play a4. This way I'm cementing the position of the knight on a very good square. Now he's trying to do something like this, and just gonna win the pawn okay I could have played also queen d2 and take with the queen uh, position is just uh, lost here so it doesn't really matter I'm up two pawns here and opponent doesn't really have essentially any any serious compensation uh, just yeah you just have to be careful not to blunder anything so if you blunder something yeah then you can let the opponent come back into the game but otherwise it's very difficult okay now we take and um, okay we can just trade everything and just come back and up two pounds and that should be a pretty straightforward win so king h2 now d6 pawn is under attack as well um, yeah two extra pawns is a very very serious advantage in a position like this Okay, I don't have to do this, but I will, I really don't need to do this move. It, it actually weakens my position, but I could probably get away with it. All right, so I'll, I'll do it anyway, just, just to make it interesting. I didn't have to play it, but it's probably not a bad move. I normally don't like to weaken position of my king when I'm winning like this, because sometimes it could be costly. But uh, here, 
I think it should be okay. So it takes. Okay, we take. And now we have three extra pawns. So three extra pawns is quite a lot. I just play b3, protect everything, and h5 is played by my opponent. I play g5 because now I have some queen f6 ideas if I want to. So I'm just, I mean, not, not right away. So the question is now, uh, do we need to play queen f6 here? And we're up three pawns. So I would say, sure, why not? Give up one pawn and, uh, and just, you know, go f4 next move. f4 is important to get into, to stop the king and then king, if, king f3, king f4 is completely winning. So that's game over. So let's take a look at uh, the chat here, see what we have. We have a lot of uh, friends watching. Lev, Levon Bagramian wants to play. Hello, Lev. Uh, they were bishop c4. Okay, why not bishop c4? Bishop c4, he will play knight takes c4 in that position. And he takes the pawn on e4. So I went bishop c2 to protect it here. The the e pawn was hanging. Uh, that was the question. Benoni, the idea is to give up pawn for activity. Well, sometimes they do give up pawn for activity. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So it's uh, it's no guarantee, okay? Uh, yes, you relax only when opponent resigns. Correct. You never relax until opponent stops the clock, you know, and ready to, uh, you know, shake hands, okay? That's only only when the score sheets are signed, okay? That's when you relax. A lot of players, including myself and many, we make a mistake of thinking the game is already over, but it's not. So, let's see. We have people watching us all over the world. We have... Fans from India, from Iraq. I mean, we really got a lot of international people watching. Uh, all right, so let's see here, guys. We have, we are beating our record today. 57 challengers we have currently waiting. Look at this list here. So we have three plus two is the time control we're playing today, guys. So, yeah, we have huge, huge lineup here, guys. So we have one opponent on a, on a wait, so we're going to give him a chance here. A happy pawn. Happy pawn. 2200. So this is a serious opponent, okay? So 2200, it's... So it's... Uh, so, okay, I play knight c3 sometimes, but I'm going to just play knight f3 now. Just to see it. Okay, knight check. I play knight bd2 here. Queen a4 check. a3 giving me the bishop. All right, so go here. Yeah, this is actually uh, slightly better for white, I think, because now I get the bishop on b2. It's not so clear what is this knight going to do on c6. The future of this knight, it's not very clear, okay, guys? The future of that knight. So I take with this knight, bishop takes is absolutely uh, playable as well. So he wants to play b5, so we're, of course, not going to blunder that. We're going to play queen c2. And uh, now I go knight here takes, knight takes, okay, yeah, so my opponent is actually playing quite well, I, I, I like how he's playing here, so definitely a strong opponent. It looks like. So let's get the bishop here. Bishops are always good, guys. So we get a bishop. It's good. I don't think I've played the best way so far. So, but we'll see. Queen a8. Very fast, too. He's not only just playing good moves, playing fast, them, too. You know, all right, let's take the pawn here. 
I hope. I'm not blundering something here. Queen b8. Okay, I have queen e2 actually. Okay, I'm not sure about my position here. I think my opponent has a lot of threats. So I might need to be careful here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to focus a little bit, guys, so I can win this game, hopefully. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's not so easy, okay? I can tell you that it's not easy. Okay, so, so we're going to do this funny move here. Castle. Yes, it's still legal, guys. It's still legal to castle, okay? It's a huge move. Otherwise, you know, you start the knight h2 and stuff. Wow, what is this guy doing? He's, he's like tactical guy. Wow, that was, that was a strong tactic. Wait, this guy is like 2200. He's playing really, really strong. All right, so let's see here. Wow, that was a strong tactic. This guy is, must be a grandmaster or something. Yeah, this is a very strong tactic. Knight e3. I missed this, guys. Wow. Our perfect record might be in trouble here. We might be in a little danger now. All right. So. Yeah, this bishop g5. And the way he played it was amazing. How quickly he saw this idea. All right. So what to do? Rook g1, queen c6 he has, unfortunately. Yeah, but I might... I, I, don't, I don't have anything better, though. This was... Wow, this was a world-class tactic. Seriously. I mean, this was, like, amazing. All right. Well, guys, we're in trouble here, so we might lose this game, okay? I didn't play too well, but... But he, my opponent played well, so that's credit goes to him. All right, so, yeah, this is not good. We didn't play well, he played well, so. Okay, so he's not even. All right, let's get rid of these queens here. I'm just trying to get some kind of end game, you know, but I don't know if I can even get that. Yeah. No, not easy, not easy. I can tell you it's not easy. <clears throat> well, let's try this, guys. Last uh, try, you know. It's a very, very difficult position. Yeah, looks like a good game. Yeah, well, that was a good game here. Uh, let's quickly look at this. This was quite quite impressive play, actually, by Black. So, um, okay, probably, probably, um, this knight c4, maybe, guys, wasn't the best. I just, maybe, just got carried away a little bit. Bishop c4 and just castle was the normal way to play. So, clearly, taking with the knight, it's, like, delaying the development a little bit. But... Yeah, and uh, he played well. He played very well here. Now I'm a little bit behind in development here, so it's not so simple. Maybe I should just play bishop d3 and give up the pawn. I don't know if we can do the analysis here. No, I don't think. Bishop d3, take on g2, rook g1, and bishop b2 and long castle. It's, it's interesting. So, yeah, he played well here. I'm not sure if... Well, if I knew how tactical this opponent was, I would have just traded queens here, guys, for sure. Uh, this was quite impressive. He he played really strong tactical. Rook takes b5. Was not an easy idea to do. And then take. I mean. And the knight e3 was a very nice tactic. Basically, uh, using the, uh, the overworked piece. The queen is overworked because... Uh, if I take with a pawn now, it's hanging, and the queen takes, he has a bishop g5 threat. 
And unfortunately, I don't have the move uh, f4 because of the queen b2 mate. So perhaps maybe long castle was not correct. Uh, but it's some problems because he is threatening to play. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's go. We have another game here. Yeah, that was a tough one, guys. That was a tough loss. All right. Okay, let's see here. We have another game started here. Let's see if there's any interesting questions. Uh, okay, guys, let's, we're gonna focus on this game now. So, so we have another King's Indian here. H3. Now knight c6 comes in. I will play d5. I don't know if my opponent gonna play. He's gonna play back. I'm gonna take with this pawn here. I just want to play this position with the e pawn. You know. Okay, rook e1, putting pressure. Bishop g5. Okay, queen c8. I'm not sure what is he trying to do. Is he going to really sack on h3? I mean, that's just... That's just not going to work, in my opinion. But maybe he will. All right, let's see. Knight goes on d4. Yeah, he does it. So he wasn't kidding. He just did that, but okay, this sack shouldn't work. I mean, with all the... Ideas, this sack shouldn't work. Okay, now. Okay. Okay, so what do we do? All right, let's bring the rook in. I always like to bring all my pieces in, so that way they're all developed. And let's put a queen here for now. A ninety four is coming up. Of course, if the knight moves, I will trade queens, and I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, queen c5. Okay, I was expecting this. So let's bring this bishop back for a second. But I think some 96 ideas, you know. Okay, I'm going to try to trade a few pieces. Ok, 
Okay, I will protect my position. Take. Yeah, I don't think this this sacrifice worked, you know. I don't think it uh, it does work. So okay, let's try to trade. We go for attack actually, but he's he's quite solid, so it's not going to be easy to give a mate. Now he's threatening some knight f2 ideas. Okay, we defend. Now we attack the queen. Yeah, very good. All right, next, let's see here. Let's see if we have some questions. Okay. All right. Let's see what do we have. We have some questions, people asking. Okay. Uh, all right, let's see, guys, more questions we have. All right. Yeah, the H3 sack didn't quite work. So the last player, Duhov, Kyle, uh, Armenian friend, I think, uh, just... Uh, it was very, very, yeah, the sacrifice didn't quite work here. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Var, it's Benjamin. Hey, Benjamin. Greetings, Benjamin from St. Louis. Yes, Benjamin. Let's see who else is there. Uh, some friends that I know. And students okay guys um, all right uh, okay I guess let's see here uh, I only play challenge 10 minute uh, yeah I see Benjamin yeah all right very good guys so we have 53 people challenging us and we have about 25 minutes left so we'll get a couple of more games in okay and we'll be doing this again uh next week i believe yeah. next thursday so make sure next thursday three o'clock you're on lee chess if you want to play me okay if you want to have like discussion and uh uh we can talk about it if you have some good questions you can ask me okay okay next person who has been waiting is a c c n t let's see here all right should we do some fun opening let's see should i go here G4, so we have some, you know, uh, it's a check perk, the name of this opening, so, well, I gave up to two bishops, so probably didn't play the best way, but 
As long as I can trade dark square bishops, I'm happy because then my opponent doesn't have. And here I want to trade queens because if I trade queens, I can put my king on e7 and hopefully I can play b5. So I have some good pressure here, you know, on the queen side. So I go king e7, b5. All right, let's see here. Nether London, let's see. Yeah, guys, I wish I can play all of you, but, you know, we have so many people in line, and I'm kind of going by the, you know, by the people who have been waiting the most, you know. So, but, uh, yeah, so just make sure if for some reason, you know, if you, you didn't get to play today, just try to be back next the week, 3 p.m. Central Time, okay? That's around the time where we're going to start the stream and, uh, you know, and I'll be happy to play you, okay? And uh, also, the, uh, I want to make sure you guys are watching the World Cup. It's uh, the, the first three rounds already finished at the World Cup, and uh, there's 16 players left. And it's quite exciting. We got three Americans in that 16 field. We got Jeffrey Shang, we got Wesley So, and Lanier Dominguez. So we have three guys in. And if they can win a couple of more matches, just a few more matches, you know, and we could have, you know, more representatives in the next candidate tournament because the first two places qualify to the candidate tournament. So make sure you tune in tomorrow and watch and support, you know, if you're from US, our American players and uh, see if they can pull through and qualify. We already have Fabiano Caruana in it as a runner-up, so he'll be doing it. But Jeffrey Shang, yeah, he's, he had a great match, sensationally defeated Anish Giri in a nice tactical game, the last playoff game, and it was a beautiful game he won. And uh, basically, yeah, sent Giri home. So he's playing a very tough opponent, Jean-Christophe Duda next match and uh, you know it's, Duda is a little bit higher than Jeffrey but uh, you know Jeffrey is very young and talented so he can you know I think he, he has good chances um, and Wesley, Wesley Soy is going to be playing Vitugov and I believe Lenier Dominguez is going to be playing Alexander Grishchuk so those are going to be the big, big matchups starting tomorrow. Uh, okay, I'm better here, but I need a pawn. So I'm going to bring the knight to b6 and try to fork and win the a3 pawn. This b4 move might have been weakening. So my opponent is behind on a clock, and it's a tough position to be in. So I'll just consolidate the position with f6. Eh, maybe I should have played knight f6, actually. I regret doing that. I let him off the hook a little bit there, but yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that, so I'm going to take this one, I'm going to go here, so my plan is to get a knight on e6, my plan is to get a knight on e6, so let's see if I can do that, uh, and my opponent plan is to get a king on b4, all right, so let's see here. See if we can come up with some ideas here. All right, let's. All right, we're gonna we're gonna have to play fast and put some pressure. I don't think I'm playing the best way this end game, but it uh, might be a might be a draw actually. I mean, I'm not happy the way I play this end game. So okay here.
not quite happy the way I play this. Can I always give a letter? I think I'm probably winning in the king and pawn endgame, but I'm not sure. He didn't take it, so. Okay, this was interesting. So take. Take. I feel like my king is closer here, guys. What do you think? I should be able to win, no? All right, good game, good game. I was that was that was a pretty pretty well played game by my opponent. I mean, I was slightly better, but it was not easy. All right, let's see here. Uh, looking forward to him and a wonder, of course. Yeah, they're two two bright, uh, you know, American. You know, they're the you know the young. American players they have great future. Some people think Duda is favorite against Xiong, but then they think they're gonna run into MVL, so they think MVL is gonna go through. But wait, I think MVL has to play uh, the winner of Aronian game. Uh, do I have a classical chess player? Yes, of course. I grew up studying a lot of Karpov and Petrosian games. So I studied their collection of the best games by world champion Petrosian and Karpov. Um, so let's see. No, no, I mean, it's like our uh, stream is in English, but okay, you can type in Russian. I can understand that also. Or you can type in, you know, you know, we have some Armenian friends who were typing. So, but yeah. Uh, so let's see here, challenge me, let's see. Uh, how do you come up with ideas in dynamic positions? Well, first thing you gotta do is look at the placement of your pieces. See if your pieces are well placed. And if you think they're not, you can try to improve the placed pieces, okay? So that's important. Uh, all right, so uh, Petrosian, okay, I grew up, uh, you know, in Armenia, and the chess school I went to was named after world champion Petrosian. So I was, you know, you know, one way or another already influenced influenced by his uh, game because I was from the same country that he was a world champion, and uh, but also I enjoy his games. I think it was a very unique sense for the positional play here. All right, guys, let's get one more game in here. Uh, probably gonna get. Maybe two more, let's see. Uh, hi there, people. Hi there, people, let's see. Let's see. All right, let's play a little French defense here. As you guys know, I'm a French player, lifelong French player, have been playing this opening for 30 years. And, you know, sometimes I have really good games, sometimes I have some bad games as well, uh, but, you know, it's a kind of opening that you're going to lose games sometimes, but you, if you, you know, study and play well, and you're going to get rewarded as well, you know? So, so I actually had a game like this before, so I'm quite familiar with this setup. Uh, yeah, this, this, is, this is actually played before this. So the point is not to castle. I think you play h6. And then so I think Nepo played rook h3, rook g3, no? So this was like a nep Nepo idea. So, so my opponent, I don't know if he knows this game, but he was just trying to lure me into castle so he can play bishop h7 and win the game, you know, and knight g5 check. So he probably was trying to do something like that, but...
Okay, so we're gonna start the attack. We don't need to castle here. King is perfectly safe on e8. In fact, it's safer there than you castle. If you castle, then opponent can go queen e3 or queen d2 and sack on h6 and attack you. So in fact, your king is much safer to be on e8 here, okay? So now I'm just trying to play before and attack. Okay, now he's going back. I'm not sure what is he trying to do. So we stick with the program, right? We just play b5 to play b4. You stay with the program. Well, yeah, there is a good comment about Petrosial being a tactical player. But yeah, I mean, Petrosian didn't attack often, but it was a, it was, it was a joke that his... Uh, colleagues made actually about Petrosian they say Petrosian doesn't attack often you know but when he attacks most likely you're done you're gonna get made it okay so he wouldn't attack often but when he attacked he made sure he calculated very deeply enough that his opponent is not gonna survive the attack so he did obviously have some nice attacking wins as well uh, you can't just become a world champion by defending. So, queen e3. Okay, I'm trying to trap this knight in a corner. Uh, it's not so easy. At least, okay, let's see here. Okay, can I go like. I probably could have played better now, I'm thinking. Not sure if I like what I did. Okay. I probably need to bring this queen back to c7 here, guys, and then play like knight a7, knight b5. I think that's going to be a strong plan here. And hopefully, I don't get made it. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was worried, I was worried about that move. I was a little worried about that move and he played it. Basically, my opponent is playing correctly. He's creating a counterplay and I'm in trouble here. This, this, this didn't go that well. This didn't go according to the plan here. Okay, we take this guy. Oh, this is a good news, guys. We won a central pawn, so now we're fine. Yeah, we got lucky he didn't play g6. You know, I don't know why he hesitated a little bit too long. When you start an attack, you go for it. You cannot hesitate. Once you hesitate, you start doing other things. And this is just, you're going to lose the momentum here. Okay, we got to make sure we don't blunder queen f7 here, okay? So that, that's a key. So let's put the bishop here. Okay, he's attacking here. Not sure what's going on here. It's, it's super messy. I have many interesting ideas. Okay, let's just go here. Now I want to take on h4. Now the knight is under attack. And um, queen d5, wow. It's a good shot. Okay, it's getting too messy. Let's just trade queens. Getting a bit too messy here. Things get really complicated. You want to trade pieces. So we also have a nice advantage on the clock, which would be useful. In blitz, you know, the clock is very, very important. So 
It's better to have the worst position, but more time on the clock. But if you have a really good position and you're very low on the clock, it's going to be very hard in a blitz game. Okay, so not sure what is he trying to do here. So let's uh, let's do a little questioning and ask him where is he going to go now. Okay, let's ask him again. Where are you going to go now with the rook? The problem is also the knight is actually hanging on h3. So okay, let's take this guy. Let's get back on this diagonal. Now, pin it to win it. <coughs> we want to pin him again. And end the game with a nice checky. Okay, that should do it for this game. Okay, guys, so let's see if we have some more interesting questions here. Alakine is the best of all time. Yeah, I mean, there, you know, it depends on the preference, guys. I mean, so there, it really depends on your preference. Uh, bishop takes g5 check. Uh, yeah. Bishop c3, bishop b5 is winning. Okay, guys, and let's see. We still have a lot of people waiting for the challenge, okay? So we still have a lot of people, so let's see here. All right, so let's start this game here. I'm white in this game. And against a 2,000 rated opponent. So I expect this would be a, a challenge. Uh, let me play this line. Let's see. See if my opponent knows this line. Mm -hmm. So bishop b3. Yeah, I played this in one of my games. This 92 is a very interesting move. The point is, I want to play now knight c4, hitting the queen. And uh, yeah, so he didn't take. So now, uh, what was the idea here? There's a way, you know, there are a couple of games ended in a draw after knight b3, queen takes c3, and bishop d2. So there were, there were a couple of games played like that that ended ended in a draw, so I will just go bishop e2. I think this is the correct move. See, I, I hope I don't, I'm not mixing this. Because if I mix this up, it's going to be bad. All right, I hope I'm not mixing, but I'm not 100% sure, guys. I only played recently this 92 line, so have only one game so far played in it. I found it a very interesting move, but not easy to play. Okay, let's castle. Let's get the safety. Mm -hmm. And if he takes now, I feel like I have a knight b3 tactic, which is which is huge because otherwise my center is just collapsing. So knight b3 now. Actually, I can go knight c4. I feel like it's better. Now, where is the queen going? Big question is, where is the queen going to go? And then I go d5. I'm ready to give up my exchange here for the initiative, OK? Yeah, this is already clearly better for me because I have the center and my opponent uh, pieces are very awkward here. Threatening knight b6 now, by the way, guys. So.
yeah, again, we'll be back at 3 o'clock next week, okay? Okay, queen d7. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on here, so let's just take this for now. Go queen d2. I want to get rid of the dark square bishop here as soon as possible, because I feel like if I do that, that will give me a nice advantage. So, But first things first, got to get your rooks together, guys. Always put your rooks together, remember. Okay, let's see if we can weaken the position a little bit. Okay, most likely this is the last game, guys, because we don't have that much time. So I have d6 here, takes, queen d6, takes, takes, that winning exchange. So if he takes, I can take, I think it works. Yeah, he never got to finish his development, so this is the big problem for my opponent. If he had gotten his bishop out, then maybe it could have been okay, you know, but now it's just problematic. Yeah, we take. There are many ways you can play this position, but I'm just going to play the most simple way. And just to create problems for my opponent. Yeah, d6 pawn is very, uh, is really advanced quite deep, you know, so it's difficult to do much about it. So, I will play this bishop d5. There are other moves as well. It's a tactical idea. If he takes on d6, I can take on f7. So just using some tactical ideas. So now we go in. Rook belongs on a 7th, right, guys? Your rooks always belong on a 7th rank. We double up. Now look at this tactic, guys. Bishop f7, check. If it takes with the rook, we take the queen. If it takes with the king, we have queen d6. So you have to go there. Let it check. And we pick up a bishop. Not sure why he did that last move, but. Okay. All right, guys. This was great, okay? Let's, uh, at the end, let's look at some, uh, uh, what do we have? Yeah, 3 p.m. next Thursday, guys next week okay uh, my friend eric rosen is uh here hey eric uh so who else is here let's see yeah we had a couple of friends that i know and students so it was thank you for joining everybody 3 p.m next thursday i'll be up again playing and you know sorry if we didn't get to play you we had a lot of people waiting and we still have 37 people in the queue but we run out of time time goes by quick when you're playing blitz as you know so, and again, thank you for joining everybody. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, rook on a seventh. Always remember, rook on a seventh rank, and that's how I won this last game. Rook on a seventh, bishop on d5. 
And yeah, once again, thank you everybody for watching and uh, tuning in. And this was a lot of fun. And uh, we'll be back here uh, next Thursday for some more uh, stream and play, okay? All right, see you guys.